Cheers, mate. I've got a debate and it's gonna rate with the best. Cheers, mate. I've got a debate and it's gonna rate with the best. Cheers, mate. Oh, I've got a debate. Oh, and it's gonna rate. Oh, with the best. Cheers, mate. Welcome to the Car Pervert YouTube channel. I am Johnny Smith, and this is a place where you can come to see cars like this being driven, cars like this. It should. It's your restoration which has got completely out of control, dominated your life, and you wonder why you started it. Stuff like this. This. Maybe a bit of that. This is one of my few approved uses for a pistol grip drill. This. Maybe a bit of that. Or if there's a bored Arab sheikh out there that happens to have an 80s Ferrari shooting brake that was once commissioned at a huge expense and they don't really want it anymore because they think it looks a bit rubbish. Obviously, contact me, um, go on my website. How long is it gonna take until you get the message round there? If only number nine tells number Morning. Uh, it's a nice sunny nice sunny spring like day so i thought i thought i'd take my little fiat 126 out for a little little run it's such a funny it's such a funny car it's so ridiculously short and devoid of soundproofing by all accounts as well the brakes are dreadful and I mean that. They are dreadful. I've already warmed it up for a couple of minutes. Um, so it's off choke because it's quite a mild day, it's about 12 degrees. But the joy of the Fiat 126 for me is that right now, much cheaper than the Fiat 500, it's bubbly shaped older brother. This is an air-cooled model, this is um, a Fiat 126P, so it's actually a Polish car, hence the steering wheel being on the left. It's not a British car. Uh, this is a 1990 model, so it's got a facelifted dash and a couple of other bits. Electronic ignition as well. 652cc, some 23 horse. There are children in go-karts which have more power than this Fiat, but that doesn't stop me from having a laugh every time I take it out. What is a classic car for? What do you own it for? That's what you have to consider. Are you buying it to go fast? Are you buying it to, because your uncle had one? Are you buying it because it, it's so different to what you drive on a daily basis? That's why I like cars like this. It's so different to what you normally drive. It's not fast, very, very stripped back simple days of motoring personified and also the simple days of car repair and maintenance in a world where the prices of 911s and other air-cooled uh, Porsches are just going nuts this is a rear-wheel drive this is air-cooled classic but a fraction of the cost have a Porsche 911 or a 356. Okay, it doesn't have the racing pedigree. Uh, this is an ex-Polish communism thing that I'm driving. But there's a charm about it, and at the end of the day, what do we buy classic cars for? I think people forget this. Don't necessarily buy a car because somebody tells you to buy it. Buy it because it flicks a switch inside of you. And that's what I think the Fiat 126 does. Everyone seems to grin when they see them. It's still such a charming thing. Prices for parts are so cheap. I had to replace the, um, the wheel cylinders on this and the brake shoes. Brake shoes are like 18 quid. That's 1.8, 18. Isn't that cool? I love the sound of it. There's hardly any soundproofing in this. I've got the uh, slightly deluxe model, which means it kind of has some floor carpet. Well, it looks like a floor mat from QVC channel. 
expect for one of these to pay about three and a half to four thousand quid for a really immaculate one and around about 1200 quid for a on the road okay condition one you can get them for less than a grand but these cars are made from very thin metal both the Italian ones and the, um, the Polish ones so once they rot it's quite hard to chase the rot so buy the most solid car you can because you can get a reconditioned engine for these for about 600 quid uh, which is not a lot of money for a completely recon engine I, I really believe this is one of the best first classics you could get uh, not because it's not because it's necessarily well made because they're not but they're so beautifully simple addictively simple to work on it's a great car to learn basic car mechanics with I'm gonna go the back way this is not an A-Roads car because it it's it's happy up to about 50 ish miles an hour and then it's not happy I say that it'll probably it does 60 but the joy of a car like this is that you don't need to go fast you feel very in touch with mortality quite quick quite early on I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do a 0 to 60 in a Fiat 126 because it can do 60 contrary to belief the speedos are in kph so i'll do a 0 to 62 actually oh, i'm gonna pull in well, i've stopped to get the stopwatch on my phone and i am gonna do a 0 to 62 time on a fiat 126 it will do it uh, i'm just gonna get onto a level piece of ground I can't imagine this will be as exciting as seeing a McLaren P1 or a 918 Spider Porsche or anything like that, but who knows? There is a there is a, a corner coming up ahead, but I don't think that really matters because by the time I hit that, I'm going to be going quite slowly. Three, two, one, go! Oh yes! 50! 60 kilometers an hour, not miles per hour. 80, that's foot flat down. Fourth gear is quite tall. This is when it starts to run out of puff. 90 kilometers an hour. Speedo. 133 seconds. 33 seconds. 33 seconds but what's amazing and this is the important bit actually is on paper or on phone that's a dreadfully pathetic time but it doesn't feel like it when you're driving it it feels way quicker than that and the car feels like it's quite nippy definitely like 0 to 50 kilometers an hour quite nippy I feel like I've punished the poor little thing now sorry man this particular car's done 57,000 kilometres from new, so it's actually it's in very good nick. It's been used, but it's been very well preserved. 33 seconds. The Fiat 126 was obviously the replacement for Fiat's all-conquering, Italy-mobilising Fiat 500. The 500 was bubbly, it was from the bubble car era. But when this came out in the 70s, the 70s was all about angles and boxes, that was the fashion. So it was a radical departure from the 500, despite the fact that the floor pan, the suspension, much of the oily stuff was the same. It's still a tiny, tiny car. I can still touch the rear window whilst leaving my bum firmly planted in the seat. It's still quite loud and basic, but that's the charm of it. The engine's back there behind the seats. It's, a, it's an upright air-cooled twin, 23 horsepower, 652 cc's. In Poland, this car was produced under license by a company called FSM. And in communist times, this was a very desirable car because your alternatives was 
well, motorcycle and sidecar, horse and car, donkey, bicycle. The Polish nickname it the Maloch or the Malauk, which means little one or baby one. What's great is driving around this the UK, I imported it from Poland. You get so much respect from not just young people and old people, but people who, who live from Poland and they come over here and they recognize it instantly as a, a piece of their childhood. Because this is a 1990 model, the dashboard is slightly updated. You see it's got a vinyl cover. Behind there's the painted original dash. It's got um, a bit more of an updated uh, dash cluster. Um, some more lights, warning lights. The steering wheel's a, a slightly more modern wheel. But essentially, it's the same kind of 126 as you could get back in the 70s. Quarter lights. So your air con is basically these open and a little bit of heating or cooling on, which is a lever down here by the handbrake. There's two levers by the handbrake, one's that choke, which is the left hand one and the one on the right, which is your heating. Got your demister here, and that is about it. There's no radio, there's no cigarette lighter. There's a, a glove box, which is not really a box, it's just a hole. But that's what I love about this car. The simplicity of this car is what actually makes me want to drive it. I'm going to pull out in front of the lorry. Here we go. 23 horses. When it's warmed up, much like a Beetle, the gear shift is much better. Because obviously the gear shift goes a long way from here all the way to the back, like a Porsche 911. Four speed gearbox. Little tiny carburetor about that big. It's loud in here, as you can probably tell, it's not soundproofed. Um, you can hear wind. It's quite difficult to talk actually. It's really good to start on a car like this to understand basic mechanics. It's got two spark plugs, it's got a tiny petrol tank, everything's exposed in the back. You can take the boot lid off in about 30 seconds to access the motor. It's friendly and it's air cooled so there's no radiator, there's no water pump. There's less going on. Because there's less going on, it actually makes it more fun. Less is more, as they say. Less is more. Car Pervert is an insight into the world of cars through my eyes. I'd love to get feedback on what you think of the Car Pervert video channel. I want you to tell me what you want to see. What cars do you want me to go and drive and find? And where do you want me to go? I've been a motoring journalist since 1998. And I've been doing car-based telly since 2005. Now it's time for a YouTube channel. Come on in. Click this to subscribe. Oh, it, it might be there. Somewhere around here. Just subscribe. Just subscribe. And it's gonna rain, we're gonna pass Cheers mate, I'll walk